This summer, Paramount Plus presents the great reality escape. Let's do it. With new series. It's time to get up right! If you get thrown in, you gotta win. And new seasons to escape to. You just became my target. I have never seen such savages. <laughs> with attitudes. Give me a damn pizza! Competitions. Survivor's ready! And guilty pleasures you don't have to feel guilty about. <laughs> Escape your everyday reality with our reality every day. This is big. Paramount Plus. Stream now. Yeah. A New York City point guard will give up his girl and his chain before he give up his dribble. We revolutionized this game with our influence. New York City playground basketball blew up on a global scale. What we're seeing was cultural resilience. It's New York City at its finest. It's the last stand, and here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right, it is the last stand. We bring you some of the biggest names in the sport. I'm Brian Custer. Joining us today is the former WBC lightweight champion. Now listen, he went away for a little bit, but he's back. Omar Figueroa Jr. joins us here on the last stand. My brother, I feel like, I feel like it's been years it has. since, since I mean, we've had a conversation. It has. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you, though. Um, so, from my understanding, Omar Figueroa is coming back, uh, and he's coming back in August, uh, taking on Adrian the Problem Broner. Um, this was a fight, I think, uh, originally it was going to happen in 2018 yeah. that it was going to go down. Then it was supposed to go down in July, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, this year. Now, August. Tell me why Broner. Tell me why it didn't happen in 2018. I honestly don't remember. Broner is just someone we've been wanting to fight for a long time. We know that he's a world-class athlete, and we know that he can, you know, bring out the best in myself, too. But uh, I don't know. It's just business, you can say, is the reason why it didn't happen. And, but we're looking forward to it now, so hopefully it goes through. You know, I, I was reading up on, on this fight, and a number of people have written, this is a fight that will determine which one of these guys is still as they call it, a top-tier welterweight. Mm -hmm. But you guys are fighting at 140. As far as I know, it should be at 140, so we'll see about that. I don't uh, know. What, what do you, what do you, what's your response when people have written, this will decide whether or not one of these guys is still elite? I agree. I mean, I think, I think we're both at a point in our careers where, you know, especially with our age now and, and our trajectory, uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to bring, bring, make, make a challenge to Broner and say, whoever loses this fight should retire. <laughs> you know, and I think that, I think the people would like those stakes too, because we've both had our troubles outside of the ring. And, you know, obviously they've, they've translated to, to, or transferred over inside the ring. And, and I feel like that would be, that would be a good ultimatum for either one of us. This is a hard question to ask, but even from hearing people talk about the fight, They've said it's also one of those fights where to determine whether one of these guys still care about the sport mm -hmm. anymore. It can't care about doing it anymore. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, obviously everyone's going to have their own opinion. Uh, only we know what we go through and the things we have to deal with outside of boxing because people forget we're human too. Mm -hmm. You know, they forget that we have lives outside of boxing and that are more important than what we do with our. This is our job, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like. If we're gonna judge people's lives based on their jobs, then we wouldn't, you know, we would. A lot of people would yeah. would not have very good ratings, right. you know, because not everyone performs the best at their jobs, especially, you know, given like I said, life gets in the way, and life is more important than than our jobs. So, at, at least for me, there were so many issues, there were so many things going on outside of boxing that, I mean, I I feel like I'm a professional to the to the max, you know, but there were so many things going on behind the behind closed doors that that prevented me, obviously, from from achieving my full potential. And I feel like, thankfully, now that that I'm I'm paying attention to myself and putting myself first, I feel like like a lot of the, a lot of that has been settled, and I'm able to finally focus 100 percent on on what I what I do, what I can do with this craft. What do you expect out of Adrian Broner when you look at um, what he's done here lately? 2017, got a win over Adrian Granados. It was a split decision victory. He lost to Mikey Garcia, got a draw to Jesse Vargas, lost to Manny Pacquiao, 
got a really, let's be honest, a debated decision victory over Giovanni Santiago in the bubble that a number of people thought he, he should have gotten the loss in that. He, he, is, he is put out on, on social media that he is back and that he wants to be a champion again. What version do you think you're getting of Adrian Broner? Honestly, I'm preparing for the best version of Broner. I mean, we know that he's a world class athlete. And like I said, I know from my, from my own life, from my own experience, that the trouble that you have outside the ring can follow you inside the ring. So I'm not, I'm not overlooking Broner at all. And I'm expecting the best version of him. And that's what we're preparing for. Looking at, at, at you, you know, you're, you're coming into this fight off for two straight losses. You're Dennis Ugas. Listen, we already know he's one of the top yeah. welterweights in the world. But you lose to Abel Ramos, right, 13 months ago. And, and there, were, there were a number of people who wrote after that fight, uh, Omar Figueroa Jr. looked like someone who shouldn't fight anymore. Yeah. He stopped you in the sixth round. What happened in that fight? Well, obviously, I mean, <sighs> so frustrating yeah. to go back to that. Yeah. But... I don't know. I I wish I knew what the heck happened that fight. Uh, my legs just weren't there, and we, you know, that's the worst thing and the most frustrating thing to happen because we went through a whole camp. I like I said, whenever I'm in camp, I'm 100% in camp, and I dedicate myself. Like I think I consider myself a professional to the full extent extent of the word, and I did everything I had to do to be perfect for that fight and I know that the first round I know I heard him and I know that I could have finished him but when I try to put in that little extra effort to, to finish him my legs just weren't there mm. and obviously everyone saw you know I was freaking throwing up and I don't mm -hmm. know what the heck was going on I don't know what happened to my body at that point but that's that's also what started me on this in introspective journey and that's when I, I, you know, I started looking into mental health and I realized how important that was. And, and uh, I don't know if that's the key, but it's been a huge component and my life's been a hell of a lot better since then. And in and, and leading up to that, because uh, 2016, uh, I know you, you had hand injuries that kept you away from the ring. But, you know, after I think it was after you beat Robert Guerrero. In 2017, you didn't fight for like two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were gone. Yeah. Uh, what 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 happened then? You know, tell me what injuries. Mm. And that's 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 what's hindered my career too. Like I, I've had injuries. I've broken my hands, as I was telling you. I've broken my hands several times each, and uh, you can't do anything without yeah. your hands in right. boxing. So, having to go through camp with messed up hands and, and injuries, it just, it makes the load of, you know, it, it's already hard, especially, like I said, I don't know if, if it's just me or what, but like I take this sport seriously and I know just how dangerous it can be. And I think about those things and I can't help but think about those things. I think about my brain, I think about my longevity, I think about my kids, my, my, my future with mm -hmm. my kids and if I'm gonna be mentally able to, to be there for them. So having these injuries just makes things worse because I know that I'm going up against world-class athletes, not 100%. Like, how do you expect a race car driver to go into an Indy 500 race, you know, with, with flat tires yeah. or knowing that they have, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's just a defective impossible. car. Exactly. And, and I knew knowingly going into these training camps and everything, I mean, like I said, we don't play boxing. We go in there and risk our lives every, every day. And uh, so I don't know, I think it was just a combination of everything that started taking its toll, but we're, we're done with all that. It seems that the, the biggest issues that I had, a lot of the baggage that I was carrying, a lot of the, the problems at least that I created in my own head, essentially, you know, tending to myself has, has eliminated a lot of that mm. and has allowed me to focus, to have a clear path to focus on bettering myself physically, mentally, and everything for, for my fight. And, and so when you said after the Ramos fight, you, you had to take go introspective to see what the heck is going on with me, Why? Exactly. Because, you know, it, it was almost the only thing we would find out about Omar Figueroa Jr. would be, let's say, it was like, oh, uh, Omar Figueroa Jr. has been arrested for DUI or this exactly. and that. What, what, what did you find out? And what was it that you needed to get help? Well, I, it may come a surprise to a lot of people, but it was, it was actually Simone Biles. And the fact that she pulled out of the Olympics, that, that lit a fire under my ass. And 
you know, it, it got me thinking like, man, if, if she has the guts to, to pull out of, especially knowing that, she, you know, she's one of the focal points, you know, of, of the Olympics. And, she, and we all know that. And she had the guts to pull out, to take care of herself. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't want to put, you know, obviously any gymnast down or anything, but like we're getting punched in the face, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it kind of made me think like, well, if, if she's pulling out of the biggest competition when she's one of the faces of the, of the, the Olympics, at least for the U.S., right? It's like, I, what am I doing with myself mm -hmm. or to myself? Like, why aren't I paying attention to my, to my brain, especially? Like, I consider it the most vital, the most important part that I, of me that I have. And it's like, I don't, I'm just completely, uh, what's the word I'm Dismissive looking for? Dismissive of, what, yeah. of what's going on? Exactly. Mm. And so that's, that's what kind of started me on this journey. But then, I, obviously, my fight and the way it went and everything, I just, I knew I had to, to look inward. And, and so did you seek professional help? Yes. What happened? Yeah, so I went and talked to a doctor and and immediately I went I went to get diagnosed for ADHD because I know for a fact that I have ADHD or knew. And so when I talked to him, he gave me a questionnaire, filled it out real quick and you know, filled out several questionnaires, talked to him, blah blah blah. And you know, the first thing he diagnosed me with was bipolar we'll disorder. Wow. So that was a surprise to me. Uh, and he was hesitant about the ADHD until, you know, we, we talked a little bit more and he asked me a few more questions and all that. And then he's like, yeah, okay, you have bipolar, you have ADHD. And then obviously the more we talked, it's like, you've had depression, anxiety, OCD, and uh, PTSD was the biggest one. And I didn't even know there were levels to PTSD. I would joke around. I thought, in my ignorant view, I thought PTSD was something that only soldiers yeah. you know could have but no i mean anyone and anyone can have a wow. uh, ptsd and it could be from the smallest thing to happen or you know something drastic or yeah and then like i said i didn't know there were levels so i have i ended up with complex ptsd which is a more severe version of ptsd and and when i started doing my research into that you know my life started making a little bit more sense and i started seeing why i did a lot of the things that i did and you know it kind of helped me lighten the load hmm. and, and now do you uh talk when you talk about doctor uh psychologist psychiatrist and, and so do you go to see someone on a regular basis now well i'm in camp right now right. so i haven't i haven't been home but yeah, yeah when i when i when i get back home i'm going to go back to start seeing you know a therapist too and hopefully get to the bottom of everything that yeah. I have going on. And, and how then does this allow you to be the best version of yourself? Because when you talk about PTSD and, and you're going into a fight, so you can yeah. take punches. Yeah. I mean, how are you able to deal with that or? Yeah, it will. Like I said, at least I know what I'm up against. Hmm. And back, back then it was, you know, I was blindsided by my, my own mind, you know, my, my body, my mind is, I, we just weren't in any sort of accord. And I feel like now I, I'm, I'm in control, mm. you know, because now I'm able to, to at least talk to myself a little bit or, or at least identify what's going on, whether it's inside or outside and how it affects me. You know, so it's, it's been a struggle. I'm not yeah. saying it's easy and it's a constant struggle. And, you know, one of the most daunting things is that it's a lifelong thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not something that like, oh, okay, I'll get better in a month. No. no, like this is how my life is going to be for the rest of my life. Mm. And these are the battles that I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. And as a fighter, uh, how has it been coming out and being vocal about it? It's honestly been the best thing that happened to me. I've had a lot of people that, that have already reached out to me and have thanked me for, for being open about it because they feel like they can be open about it too. And or they have someone, you know, they see me on TV or they see that I'm successful or that I've been successful. And, you know, so they they take refuge in that. And like a lot of people have told me that I've saved them from, you know, suicide or wow. stuff like that. So, like, yeah, I mean, that gave me yeah. that gave me chills because, you know, I've been there myself, too. Wow. And so the fact that that I'm able to, to talk about it. And like, it's just, I don't know. Like, I know that it, they're touchy subjects and I know that that I'm, I'm gonna get crap from it for it too or whatever. But like, I know that if I'm helping people, then it's all worth it. What was the lowest point for you? Where you well, knew I had hit rock bottom? I think for me, it happened 
uh, when I was around 17, 18 years old. Hmm. That's when things got really, really bad. And and uh, I would consider those the, the, I mean, obviously this past year too, I feel like I even had my freaking psychotic break this past year just because of everything that was going on and then getting hit with the news that I have all this stuff too. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just, it's been, it's been a roller coaster, man. It's been, it's been interesting to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Um, w- when you look back uh, on your career, what are you most proud of? The fact that I'm still here. The fact that I'm still fighting, the fact that I'm still holding my head up high, that I'm that I'm loving myself, especially, and that I'm proud of myself and and everything that I've that I've overcome to be here. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Brian Custer. I want to talk to you about our partner, Athletic Greens. You know, I started taking Athletic Greens because, quite simply, I wanted more energy, more focus doing this podcast, doing Sports Center, hosting Showtime Championship Boxing, and, of course, for my workouts. And I got to tell you, I simply love it. You know, Athletic Greens doesn't taste like one of those super healthy drinks. It has a mild tropical taste, I'm sure, that you're going to enjoy each morning. So what is it? Well, with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, what you're getting is you're absorbing 75 high-quality minerals, vitamins, whole sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to really help start your day uh, right. It contains less than one gram of sugar. There are no GMOs, uh, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, while it still tastes good. And it supports better sleep quality. It's going to give you better recovery. And it's also going to support your mental clarity while also alertness. You know, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. In essence, it's one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself, and it's lifestyle friendly. So whether you're keto, whether you're paleo, vegan, uh, dairy-free, or even gluten-free, and it costs you less than $3 a day. So really, you're investing in your health, especially if you have one of those habits where you gotta buy a brew every day. And additionally, for every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. In fact, in 2020, Athletic Greens donated over $1.2 million in meals to kids. Right now, I'm telling you, it is the perfect time to reclaim your health, your immune system with a really convenient daily nutrition and It is something that I'm telling you that is going to supplement you and look out for your health. So you know what? We're going to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five of these, these travel packs with your first purchase. And all you've got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Again, it's athleticgreens.com dot com slash last stand it is time to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance athletic greens you know um especially in the sport of boxing uh, the father trainer relationship has always been a dicey one for a number of father uh of pair, and yours too yeah. yeah but you guys are back together for, yeah. for this fight, how has that been and how has this relationship uh, evolved, especially now considering everything you're dealing with? Yeah, well, that's one thing that that kind of helped us come together even more because ADHD is, is and can be hereditary. Mm-hmm. And more often than not, it comes from the dad. Mm. So being diagnosed myself now, I, I look at my dad's mm. life and I realize that he more likely has ADHD too. So I've been trying to get him to go talk to a doctor too and get diagnosed so he can, you know, start, if he, if he's interested, of course, mm-hmm. start getting help and, and, and all that. And uh, so that, that's the main focus that I have right now is just trying to, to build a relationship with my dad, whether it's, you know, men- around mental health or just me being a grown adult now and, and being able to talk to him man to man. Yeah. You know? And, and now when we see you fighting against Broner, 
has Omar Figueroa Jr. evolved as a fighter? Because we used to just see you, a guy, take all these punches and then just out of nowhere overwhelm a guy and stop him. And we'd be like, my God, is he going to work on his defense? But So will we, have you evolved your style on things now? Well, of course. I mean, it's not my goal to go in there and get hit. <laughs> right. You know, I still try to avoid punishment as much as possible. But back in the day, I did not care about yeah. getting hit. I... I was hoping one of those punches ended me and like, wow. yeah, like I would go in there thinking like, well, fuck it. If this is it, then screw it. Like, let it be. Wow. So That's yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was, I was very self-destructive and uh, yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not that anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still crazy though. And I, and I mean that in, in a way that like, I, I just love boxing mm. so much, you know, and I love fighting. Like, there's nothing that gets me going as much as, as boxing or getting in the ring and getting punched and punching the guy. Like, I don't know. There's something so special about that. And I don't think that part of me is ever going to die. Mm. So still expect a crazy Omar in there. Still expect for me to go in there and try to hurt somebody. And, I mean, hope for the best, right? Uh, do, do you feel like for this, this fight against Broner, the hands are good yeah. and that... We are going to see, uh, let's say, uh, somewhat of a new version, I think, of Omar Figueroa Jr. Absolutely. That's what we've been working on. Obviously, we, like I said, we're trying to better myself in the ring. And, and uh, I think it will be the best version of myself. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see that for myself, too. Yeah. Are, are you, are you um, as excited to prove people wrong, too? I mean, I think there's a number of people say, oh, I think Omar Figueroa Jr., looking at that last fight, he's done. To prove them wrong, they're like, no, I, I'm still here and I'm still elite. Nah, honestly, after after knowing everything that I was dealing with, I feel like I have nothing to prove to anyone. Mm. You know, I've proved just getting my diagnosis and and reading into it and knowing what exactly that entails is like I have nothing to prove to anyone. Mm. If I've already proved more than anything, because getting having done what I did with everything that I was dealing with is is the the biggest accomplishment that that I that's why I'm saying like I I'm learning to love myself and, and appreciate myself and value myself more than anything and and knowing that I did everything that I did with everything that I was dealing with there's no there's nothing I need no nothing yeah. there's nothing else that I need in life uh how many more years you want to fight I I, I don't know hmm. I just got to see what my mind allows yeah. and how I feel and you know Interesting. Trying uh, to keep my mentals as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, all right, Omar Figueroa Jr., we come to the last segment of the show. We call it The Last Stand. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You just give me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Deal. All right, here we go. Who is the best fighting Figueroa? Is it Brandon or Omar? I would say me. Okay. Uh, if, if you lose this fight to Adrian Broner, will you retire? That's something that I've been take into consideration a lot. I don't know, hmm. but I don't know. Hmm. Uh, give me the one fighter and fight that got away. You wanted to fight this guy, it just never happened. Broner, back when we were first later to fight. Oh, okay. I mean, I wanted, I wanted Broner when he was at the, t at the peak of his career, but it just it never materialized. Hmm. Interesting. Give me the, let's say uh, the one guy who's still fighting today that you said, before my career ends, I got to get in the ring with this guy. Pacquiao. Mm. I don't know if he's still fighting. Is he still fighting? He walked away. He walked away. Well, yeah, it was Pacquiao. Pacquiao or, was yeah. the guy. Pacquiao. That's interesting. Sure. That's interesting. Uh, last but not least, will Omar Figueroa Jr. become a world champion again? That's the plan. I like it. Yes, sir. I like it. I, you, you look great. I mean, you, you, you could just tell that you, you seem like you, you're more comfortable mm -hmm. and know who Omar Figueroa Jr. Yeah. is now. That's yeah, the vibe so, I get. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's what we... I'm still trying to discover myself. You know, there's still so much left to, to, left to uncover, especially with camp and everything that camp brings. But I feel like, I feel like yeah, we're going to get the best version of myself, and I feel like the best version of myself is going to be really, really hard to beat. And... The one thing about Adrian, he loves to play mind games. Mm -hmm. And you know that's going to happen, especially as it comes to fight week. He's yeah. going to tell me, I should have should have effed you up back then. I'm mm -hmm. going to eff you up now. Are you prepared for that and ready for that? I'm, that's something that has never phased me, especially okay. now that I know that 
that I have all this stuff and it's like, hell no. I'm going to be, that's the most prepared. My mind is the best thing that I have about me, like I said. So now that I have it in, under control, I'm good. I'm ready. You're going to help a lot of people. You know that, right? Yes, sir. You're that's gonna, the plan. You're going to help a lot of I people. I feel like that supersedes my boxing career even at, the, at this point. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the best, and he's back, and he's going to be taking on Adrian Broner, Omar Figueroa Jr. That's what we do here on The Last Ten. We bring you some of the biggest names in the sport, just like Omar Figueroa Jr. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week. This summer, Paramount Plus presents the great reality escape. Let's do it. With new series. It's time to celebrate! If you get thrown in, you gotta win. And new seasons to escape to. You just became my target. I have never seen such savages. <laughs> with attitudes. Give me a damn pizza! Competitions. Survivor's ready! And guilty pleasures you don't have to feel guilty about. <laughs> escape your everyday reality with our reality every day. This is big. Paramount Plus. Stream now. Yeah. A New York City point guard will give up his girl and his chain before he give up his dribble. We revolutionized this game with our influence. New York City playground basketball blew up on a global scale. What we were seeing was cultural resilience. It's New York City at its finest.